Have you ever been involved in a negotiation where re you reached a deadlock? Both parties couldn't go on to that point that they call progress because things were hopelessly deadlocked. Well, that's what we're going to be discussing today in American government. We're going to look at the idea of federalism and how it broke the logjam that brought the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia to a deadlock. Now, federalism is a system of government in which sovereignty is divided between a central, that is a national authority, and a constituent political unit. It could be a state or province. Federalism is a uniquely American innovation. However, the idea of federalism was spawned during the Enlightenment period. It was written, and you'll find it written in the uh, writings of philosophers like uh, Montesquieu, Hume, Rousseau, and Immanuel Kant. During that period of transition from the Articles of Confederation, considered by some to have been the uh, first constitution of the United States, to the new constitution, there was a fear on behalf of some, and many, of, if not all of the states, that there would be a loss of sovereignty by the states. That fear of losing their sovereignty became a deal breaker. After all, under the Articles of Confederation, the states had the ultimate authority. And now they're about to lose that. Or at least it seems to many they are about to lose their sovereignty. This deadlock was broken by the idea of federalism. So we're going to look at federalism today. We're going to look at federalism from a historic perspective, the various court decisions through the years that have divided or dictated the ebb and flow of the dominance from the national to state governments. And then we're going to take a look at contemporary federalism. Federalism today we will look at the various forms of contemporary federalism, things like cooperative federalism. We'll look at physical federalism, both of which gave the upper hand of dominance to the national sovereignty or the national government. Again, that was what some of the originalists feared would happen. The national government would become too strong. And so we see court decisions and historical of federalism uh, given the dominance to the national government. However, there was a brief hiatus and halt to that trend of national federalism brought about by uh, some of our more contemporary presidents. They instituted what was called new federalism or devolution, that is, giving authority back to the states. So we're going to look at that ebb and flow again from contemporary federalism. And then finally, we'll conclude by looking at how public attitudes have influenced the ebb and flow between national and state dominance. Let's examine federalism in American government.